In this video, we're going to be integrating OneNote and Adobe Spark posts. So the intention here is to go beyond the standard layout or presentation of content in OneNote and move towards content for students that's more engaging, that draws on the creative elements of Adobe Spark, which I have open in another window, so that we can continue using OneNote class notebooks as a digital textbook in our classrooms, but we can inject more creativity in the type of content we present. So what I've got here is a sample Spark post that I remixed from another person's template. And I teach a subject in Year 7 where we use project-based learning in a unit of work. And we always start with a driving question. And the driving question is, if I zoom in, how can we make reading cool at school? Now here I'm using some fantastic templates that come straight from Adobe Spark. And what I like about Spark is the simple workflow when it comes to making changes. And so what I've got here is a, a worksheet that's ready to go. And I'm now going to show you some different ways that I can take this from Spark and bring it into OneNote. The first thing we need to do is to use the share option to the top right hand corner and we're going share publish we're going to be using the link option which is the one on the right hand side and every time you change or update your graphics you'll also need to update the links to ensure the new content comes across into OneNote so I've done that I've clicked link and that has updated my link and now I can simply click the copy button now we're jumping into OneNote I've got a page ready to go. So that's our normal OneNote content that we're used to. We all use headings and text and bullet points and different graphics as well. Yes, we embed videos and other web content. And the great thing is we can now embed Spark content as well. So we're going into this page. It's called the driving question. And I'm simply going to paste from my clipboard. You can see how in real time it took a few moments for the link to convert to the name of my Spark post. And underneath that, we have the exact same graphic. If I jump back to Spark, we can see that is what has been rendered onto our OneNote page. You'll also notice that there is a refresh button here. So that way, when students come to the page, it may look grayed out like it does here. And they simply click the refresh button and that will ensure that what we're seeing here is the most recent updated version of that particular link. So having imported this into OneNote, there's one thing I've learned when it comes to embedding Spark content, and that's that you need to leave the actual embed size as is. If we start to grab the corner of the content window and resize it, that might suit other content on the page. But when we refresh, you'll see that it starts to crop your content areas away. So my advice there, if I just undo that, is to work with the default embed sizes because it is scaled to fit your content exactly. Of course, you can always go into view and you can scale the page up or down as needed, and that will have no impact on any of the cropping issues that I've just mentioned. So that's something just to be aware of. When you do paste your links in, leave the embed sizes as they are because they are perfectly scaled to fit the Spark content. So this is a very engaging page in its own right, but students can't type onto these response spaces. And that was my original intention to create a page that students could complete. And we're going to use another feature of Spark and OneNote for this to happen. So I'm going to be making another page. And before I go any further, I'm going to move this into my teacher only space where I keep all of my worksheets when I'm using OneNote. Now I'm going back into the same file in my Spark post. And I'm not going to use share this time, I'm going to download it. From the options available, we'll be using PNG, the default, and start download. I'm going to keep a solid background so I can retain that light green, 
and we have just downloaded the file. Now what I'm going to be doing is going into OneNote and on our worksheet page, I am going insert picture from file and here's our driving question graphic. We can see here that we have a picture that we can scale up and down. That's useful in its own right. But I want students to be able to actually type on top of this. So I will undo the resizing. And what we do here is we right click and we set the picture as a background. And this is a great tool when you are bringing pictures into OneNote because it allows you to type on top of it. But there's still some further changes we can make so that it's even easier for students to complete. So I'll just undo my typing. And what I'm going to do is remove this entire text box. Without text boxes, we are free to click and type anywhere we like, and that's perfect for a worksheet. So who are the readers? We can go here, year seven students, and this is what I would imagine my students would be typing into these spaces. Where do you read at school? Library, classrooms. And so by not having text boxes, students are able to type anywhere in this document. If they didn't want to type, they could always use the draw tools and they could use a digital stylus to write on top of this document instead of typing with a keyboard. So there's lots of options there for students depending on how they prefer to work and what the teacher wants them to do. So the last thing to do, having created a template worksheet, is to distribute it to students. And if you have been using OneNote class notebooks, you would know that in the class notebook tab, we have the ability to distribute pages. And so I want this page to go into my student sections. And I have one section only, which I call assigned work. And when I hit the distribute button, all students will get a copy of this Adobe Spark worksheet that they can click and type on top of, or they can use a digital stylus and manually handwrite their answers into these spaces.